Well, hello and welcome to the Wednesday edition of the DC Today. It's actually going to be the last DC Today of the week because we will be in our team retreat tomorrow, Thursday. If you feel like I've been announcing that a little too much and overstating it, it's because I know how profoundly disappointed some of you are. And I'm trying to ease the pain and prep the, the, the hole that will exist in some of your hearts on Thursday when DC Today doesn't come. But today was a very uh, party like it's 2022 kind of day. The Dow was only down 30 basis points, but the um, NASDAQ was down 250 basis points, a kind of pummeling in that tech space. And the communication services sector was down, no typo, almost 6% on the day. Now, that's a cap-weighted sector, and Google is one of the largest companies in the world. They got crushed today, and that was really most of that attribution. Um, but nevertheless, I have a link to what happened with Google and, and so forth in the D.C. today. But um, you did have utilities up about half a percentage point, and consumer staples were the only other sector that were up on the day. So a pretty classic defensives did well, and then the, the really junkier, techier things got hit. Uh, but all of it was not really just about that one story regarding Google. I mean, bond yields just soared higher today. And the tenure was up 11 basis points, back to 4.95%. And so when bond yields are going up like that, um, the stocks are going down. That's a, it's that simple. The uh, and oil prices, by the way, uh, came back up to above $85 today. They were up uh, almost 2%, not quite. The news side of things did see, so yesterday I record, I say, I don't really think this uh, Ember has the votes. I walk down the hallway, I'm in the studio in our Newport Beach office, and you know, my office is from one corner to the next corner of the building. and. Uh, by the time I sit down, I was popping on Bloomberg and CNBC and news and fact set and all the things telling me that um, he had pulled out after recording that he w had been received the Republican nomination and would go to a vote. And so he obviously didn't have the votes. He pulled out. And then now today, not only did they reappoint a new nominee, Michael Johnson, but um, goes by Mike Johnson out of Louisiana, but they actually got the votes to pull him across the finish line. So somebody just got sick of this dysfunction and clown car, and uh, the, the House of Representatives now has a speaker, and that is Congressman Mike Johnson of Louisiana. Uh, markets obviously didn't really care much about it. I think most people are kind of numb to the whole story, but nevertheless, that is a, a newsworthy event from today. Um, the earnings yield of the S&P 500, that's not the dividend yield. The dividend yield is what you get paid. The earnings yield is the total profits of the S&P divided by the total share prices, current price, is still right now higher than the 10-year bond yield. Now, only by about 80 basis points, but it's worth pointing out that, you know, look, we definitely had a long period where the earnings yield was, was there was quite a widespread, but the 80s and 90s, which were two of the best decades for stocks in history, the earnings yield and the bond yield kind of went up and down in tandem. They were very, very highly correlated. So. I put a little info on that in DC today. I found it interesting. The other bigger news, which was more of a, a very early David Bonson morning story and, and didn't get a lot of play by the time the real day started, but nevertheless is a significant issue in my own study, is China's uh, fiscal policy. Seeing President Xi go visit the central bank and then having them relax this kind of soft restriction on three per deficits running no more than 3% of GDP. Uh, you are talking about profoundly um, new circumstances in what China's doing and using language that they will fight vigorously against their deflationary conditions. This is heavy leaning in to the fiscal side of uh, Japanification. Not yet on the monetary side, but that's the part I'm watching. But nevertheless, one way or the other, and I talk about this um, in the Friday Dividend Cafe uh, about China and, and their weakness, what it means to global growth, what that could end up meaning to bond yields, what that could end up meaning to the Fed. Um, we'll talk more about that in Dividend Cafe Friday. But China's weakening economic condition is a big story. And I think we're, we're, it, we're not, it's not catching, 
uh, here in the U.S. for a number of reasons. So that's the day in a nutshell. Not good for the NASDAQ, not much of a, a big deal for the Dow. Um, like I said, kind of 2022-like day. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you in the Dividend Cafe on Friday. And I'll be back with you at DC Today on Monday. But in the meantime, wish us well as all of seven offices of our employees embark upon uh, Southern California for a couple of days of a team offsite. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.